Yeah, the Caribbean saying Baton Jimbo, Barbados Royals securing a historic victory in the final match in front of their home crowd, led by a magnificent century from Rakeem Cornwall. The Royals completed the highest run chase in CPL history, reaching 223 for two to beat the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots with 11 balls to spare. Cornwall beat his previous best T20 score of 91, smashing 12 sixes and four fours in his 48 ball knock of 102 before retiring hurt. He got support from skipper Robin Powell, who scored an unbeaten 49 of 26 deliveries. Earlier in the match, the winless Patriots posted what looked like a match-winning 224 of their 20 overs after electing to bat skipper Sherfin Rutherford. Will Smead and Andre Fletcher all got half centuries. Man of the match, Cornwall, was also the best Royals bowler with 2 for 27. Captain Fantastic, Robman Powell, spoke highly of the Antigua. I expected the innings, but the longevity of it was what I didn't expect. You know, I expected him to, to rush to a 50, rush to a 60, and then and then come, and we'll take it from there. But for him to go so long, it, it's, it's remarkable. It was a fantastic knock, one of the best I've seen. Yeah, the man who provided the stellar commentary that accompanied Cornwall's feet, Nikhil Utam Chandani, joins us via Zoom. And Nikhil, before we say anything else, as a fellow commentator myself, I want to just say fantastic job on calling that Cornwall 100. Not only was it brilliant, but it was also quite original. The rack <laughs> attack. Brilliant stuff, my friend. <laughs> Ricardo, you are you are just so kind, man. I mean, thank you so much. I appreciate that. It means a lot to me. Yeah, and you're just so humble. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Nikhil, what a knock. What a fantastic knock. And in the face of a lot of criticism as well. And this young man continues to show that he not only has talent, um, but he also has... A broad back and backbone and he continues to prove many people across the Caribbean wrong. Yeah, I mean all we have to do is look back Ricardo to the one of those first games, the Royals first game in St. Lucia, when he was uh, the laughing stock when he got that run out and it was all over social media. Um, you know, he showed a lot of abuse both in person and on the various media platforms. But I think that back drop he did when he got to the 100 signifies Rakim Kowal to a T. No matter what people tell him, and we know he's had his challenges with his weight and, and he's felt uh, the burden from the public and the, the wider world for a number of years. But whether it's in the first class setup in the CPL, he always answers back. Last year, he struggled for about six games, came in the playoffs, they backed him, he got 91. Here again, a uh, few low scores, but then it, and, and then responding with a knot like that. You heard Robin Paul sum it up perfectly. No one expected him to be able to bat more than 20 to 30 balls. It's only the third time for the Royals he's batted outside the power play, and every single time he's done it, they've won the game. Yeah, you were at Kensington Oval. Give us a feel of what it was like being inside the venue, a packed venue. He spoke about the cheering crowd and how that gave him motivation to bat on. To be honest, Ricardo, I've seen a lot of cricket at the Kensington Oval, me being from Barbados, and that was one of the best atmospheres I've ever witnessed. I think he's such a lovable person, especially when he does well, that everybody just rallied behind him. Um, you know, I saw various social media pa platforms post about, you know, never giving up and staying on the journey. And I think it's just a feel-good story when you see someone like Cornwall, who's had his challenges. You don't see many cricketers of that weight being this skillful and being this successful. So... I think it was really great to see how the fans got behind him. And obviously, you know, he had a 50 a couple of years ago. I think it was in 2017 against Barbados at the Kensington Oval. This one, though, was much more dominant. And luckily for the fans, he was on their side as well. Highest run chase in CPL history, Nikhil. Give me an idea of what you think this win could do in terms of turning the fortunes of the of the Royals around because given the bad start they've had to the season 
Two wins on the trot now. They beat the Jamaica Talawas on, on the weekend as well. And this now a big, big win. What does this do for this team going for, um, you know, forward in the rest of the competition? Well, I think it will definitely provide some level of confidence knowing that, you know, they, they have one of their openers, which were so consistent last year for them in Mears and Cornwall firing again. But I still believe that there are some cracks that need, to, uh, uh, that there are some weaknesses in the side that need addressing. You heard Robert Paul talk after the game extensively about the death bowling. It continues to be a problem. They're the worst team after the Patriots in the last five overs. I also want to see someone else from that top order uh, be able to stand up when Cornwall and Mears don't get off. But look, they won that game. They're now into the top four. You have an opportunity against TKR on Wednesday night. You beat them. You're instantly into the top two. So it really has, you know, set up nicely for them. They've also got, after those four impact games, uh, they've now got three games in, in about two weeks. So a long rest time, a lot of time to recuperate from the long week. And if they can win on Wednesday against a very strong TKR side, not only will they have the confidence, but they would also be in a very good standing going into that playoffs. And we all saw, you just need to finish fourth. Last couple of seasons, fourth place has won the CPL. Yeah, well, Nikhil, not only do you travel, but you travel pretty quickly. And I hear that you're now in Trinidad and Tobago. The Knight Riders, they had a win on Sunday as well. They now have three wins from seven matches heading into their home leg. A two-run victory over the Jamaica Tano was 142 for eight to 140 for seven. A really big deal for the Trinbago Knight Riders, but the Tano was suffering a third straight defeat. Yeah, for me, I'll start with the Talos. They, the biggest thing they need to address, in my opinion, is how does the batting respond when Brandon King doesn't come off? And he even batted the power play. They did not lose a single wicket in the power play and still struggled to get that 140. Yes, the surface wasn't the easiest, but I think looking at their batting lineup, they would have batted themselves to get uh, to that score pretty convincingly. I know they took it very close to the final delivery, but it'll be a disappointment. Their bowling attack, for me, still remains one of the best in the tournament, given the versatility, the amount of spin they have going into the Guyanese and Trinidad conditions. Uh, but I still think the batting needs addressing. Um, they brought in Blackwood in that top order. Hasn't come off as yet just the one game. But for me, who else can it be? Shamar Brooks got that 78 on the weekend against the Royals. Can he be consistent like we saw him in 2022? Can Raymond Reaper, can he depend on him? Because it was Powell, Brooks and Reaper, that middle core last season that did the bulk of the runs going for them. And of course, Alex Seals, uh, as we know, is a T20 world beater. For TKR though, in terms of the amount of spin that they have in Narain, Hossein, and a new find in the left arm wrist spinner in Salam Kiel, they are going to be a handful to beat because it was never the bowling that was the problem. It was always the batting. And they've got Puran at three, Lorcan Tucker, Mark Dial has come to scoring. And obviously we saw that sensational 100 from Gutton on the, on the weekend and we all know what Pollard, Russell and Cole can do and the fact that they could win this game without Tom Curran and Bravo I think speaks a lot about their bowling it's great to see Andrew Russell bowling full quarters of four overs and bowling very quickly as well and do I mean this DKR setup do they become even more dangerous moving to Trinidad and Tobago and then Guyana in the latter stages of this tournament most definitely. I always assess the, the competition as, you know, it would, it would be interesting to see how it got to in the Barbados leg because I know when you move to Guyana, for me, three teams stand out. That's Trinidad, uh, Jamaica, and Guyana because of the amount of spin they have. Some may say St. Lucia as well because they've also got a first time bowling attack. But that's th trio of spinners that they have all doing different things. For me, if they bowl 12 out of 20 overs, it's extremely hard for you to score on surfaces that will be slow in nature, but also spin conducive as we get deeper in the tournament so for me i think they're a team to beat especially when their batting is firing like that and they'll have the home support for the next four games all at home yeah the massive woman cpl is in full swing as well the barbados royals last season's runners up secured their third win in as many matches their second consecutive win over the Ghana Amazon Warriors and that win securing them a spot in the final. Of course, now they will have to await their opponents for the championship match. But how good have the Barbados Royals been under the leadership of Haley Matthews? Yeah, they've been excellent. I want to say as well, credit to the Massey Women's CPL on a whole because I think the caliber has increased a lot. Mm -hmm. Last season, the highest score was 113. We've already seen 166 being chased down. A couple of days ago, 140, 147. Um, I think the overseas players that they've got this year, they were good last year, but this year I think they've gone up a level. To see Sophie Devine, 
uh, Shabnim Ishmael and a few others come in. Aaron Burns, who's been in two successful run chases, taking it down to the wire. It's advanced the overall quality of the tournament. And for me, the Royals, so just to show how dominant they are, Haley Matthews hasn't been anywhere close to her best with bat in any of the three games. And still, they find a way to win uh, and win quite convincingly. Their bowling attack, two wrist spinners, a couple finger spinners, and good seamers, uh, for me, is the biggest difference maker. But look, we go to Trinidad now. Let's see if DeAndre Dutton and Orla Pendergast, who will come back in for TKR, can help them in the Massey Women's CPL. Should be a cracking couple of days of cricket. Yeah, it definitely should be. Nikhil Utam Chandani, thank you very much for joining us on the Sportsman Zone. Once again, brilliant call on that Rakeem Cornwall century. And, uh, well, the entire Caribbean is remembering your name now. Um, so you're, <laughs> under, <laughs> you're, you're under pressure to ensure that you can repeat the next time you get a massive moment like that. No pressure, though. <laughs> I appreciate the support as always, guys. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right, Nikhil Utam Chandani. And you know, you can have a chance to join Nikhil Utam Chandani at the CPL final in Guyana. All you have to do is download the Sportsmax app from the Google Play Store or the App Store and watch all the CPL matches live. The user with most time spent on the app wins. It's as simple as that. Sportsmax and the Sportsmax app giving you a chance to travel to Guyana to watch the CPL. And all you have to do is watch us on the app. The promotion ends September 9th, so get watching.